What's going on, YouTube? R to the double E dash to the ZON coming at you once again, man. And I wanted to get on here and make this video, man. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to be talking about uh, a myriad of things, but the main topic of this video is Metroid Prime Remastered on the Switch. Yes, I caved. I said I shouldn't get it just yet. I shouldn't be spending money. Uh, damn that. 40 bucks, man. I, 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 bro, I, I could find $40, man. And it's not that desperate of a situation. I did have the money. I just didn't feel like spending it. I just said, fuck it, man. For a game of this, of this magnitude and of this epicness, got to do it. So probably like the second day after it came out, I did it. You know, so I downloaded it. Uh, we'll get into that. It's the main topic of the video, uh, but there will be other topics as well. Uh, also, what this means for Nintendo going forward as far as their layout or what I believe their plan will be, their plan of action, their strategy concerning a potential Metroid Prime 2 Echoes and Metroid Prime 3 Corruption remasters or just, you know, HD ports. We'll see. We'll talk about that. Uh, what it means for the possibility of Metroid Prime 4 either this year or next year. Uh, we'll also talk about an announcement that I saw, real cool Facebook post I, I saw on my page. Because I follow so many video game uh, communities and all that. I just saw a post uh, that spoke about Ed Boon and, and, a, and a certain project that he wants to bring to the forefront and wants to make a reality, uh, which would just be fucking awesome for me. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that, bro. But first and foremost, I must say, <sighs> Metroid Prime Remastered. Boy, look at here. This is how you do a remaster, dude. This feels almost like I want I say almost because I don't I, I think it is a remaster as far as we know, but we do know and it is, it is confirmed that there are the, the, the models, all the models have been redone. So that's, you know, models with new geometry and all that. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of the texture work has been redone, not just a simple upscaling. Uh, but it is still under the the name remastered. How how much remastered versus remake it really is? I don't know. But feels like this got the, the Wind Waker HD treatment. And I say not quite because Wind Waker HD, if I'm not mistaken, we, we had confirmation from Nintendo that that wasn't just an upscale or a, remake, uh, a, a remaster. That was a remake. Like they remade that game from the ground up. Uh, I know that they didn't do that with Prime Remastered, but they put so much work into it that it looks damn near like they did, man. I know they didn't, but so, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the, that's the quality we're dealing with here. That's how the fuck you do a remaster, man. And this is the kind of good Nintendo. You know what I'm saying? This is that Nintendo that reminds you, bro, that like when you doubt them, when you talk shit about them, when, you, when you're just turned off by them, as I've been many times in the past and will continue to be in the future because they do other stupid shit. But when they do shit like this, it's like, God, I love you. <laughs> it's just like, bro, you guys are the shit, bro. Nintendo plus Retro Studios equals boom. You know, straight up like nasty, bro. First and foremost, I'll comment. Okay, let's just talk about the visuals. Visually stunning. When you've played the original Prime, right? Uh, and the original, you know, Prime 2 and even Prime 3 Corruption on, on, on the Wii, which was, you know, visually better, uh, superior to Prime 1 and Prime 2 because the Wii was basically like a souped up GameCube. Um, so it had that little uh, little bump in visuals versus those two. But when you've played those games, and you're familiar with those games and the look and the art of those games. And then you play this remaster. It, it's undeniable that the visuals are not just better. They are, they are vastly better. They're vastly. This is a whole different galaxy, bro. This is, this is like, it, like I say, it, it looks basically like a remake because right from the jump, bro, right from the jump, when, when, when you get the distress call and your gunship lands at the, at the space station, right there, you can see so many visual differences Things that the cube couldn't really render all that well or that clearly that the Switch just does like it's nothing. And it's so clear, so vibrant. Uh, bro, Samus, like, like I said, all the models were redone apparently from what they've said. So when Samus jumps out that motherfucker and does the, the somersault and lands there getting ready for action, bro, just her look alone is just like, bro, you're de it's night and day. And that's not to put the, the original down because to this day, to this day, the original stands up. But now it's like it's gonna be hard to go back and play the original one. This is an option, bro. The the, the lighting. I don't know how many thousands of more that they. I think they did say it was in the thousands, but there's a, a shitload of more light sources that they added so that now. And I know I'm speaking kind of as a developer, so if, if I lose you guys, I'm sorry. But basically, what that means is they've added so many different actual rays of light and the sources of those rays of light 
to actually interact with the environment so it lights it in a dynamic or realistic way so when you first walk into um what is it uh when you land on Talon 4 and you first, you know, you have the Talon 4 overworld. And again, no spoilers for anybody. This is not any story stuff, so don't worry if you haven't played it. Uh, but then you first walk through any one of the first doors and you get to, like, the Chozo ruins and all that. And you see, like, you're inside. There's a roof, but there's light rays coming in and just lighting up the environment. That's what, what these light sources do. In the original GameCube, hell, back in that technology, I don't even know if you had actual light sources. I think all the lighting was baked. Now, I know that the, the, the lighting system in this game, the remaster, is still a baked lighting system, but there's a shitload more actual light sources. So the light appears more realistic. It appears lifelike versus in the GameCube. Back then, it looked amazing, but if you look at it now, the game holds up, but the lighting, you can tell we, we weren't there yet. So in this remaster, they added so many different new light sources, it, it illuminates the environment in such a realistic way that it's like it feels more lifelike. It feels like you're really there. You can see dust in the air. You can see the, the light rays filtering in through cracks in the roof and all that. Uh, particle effects. Bro, when you when you shoot your beam or, or your missiles or whatever and it makes contact with an enemy, the particle uh, effects have been turned up to like 35, bro. Like it's not like before it was decent. Like now it's like they, they, they had the technology and they had the muscle in this hardware versus the original cube to really go in and just spruce that up, man. And it's vibrant and it's bright and it's it's very emissive. Like when you shoot the when you shoot the the missile, the missile comes out, at least at the beginning. Again, now I again talking to somebody who's never beaten the original prime. All right. Like I've told you guys before, it's, it's one of my greatest shames. But the only Metroid game I've ever beat was Dread. And when Dread came out, I had never beaten a Metroid game. I'd gotten far into him, but I had never beat him. And I made it my mission that Dread was going to be the first one I beat. And I did that motherfucker twice. Fucking phenomenal. But I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm beating it this time. But I don't know if later on your missiles, you know, change color or whatever. But at the beginning, when your missile comes out, it has like a, like a purple, like, beam, like a, like a tail, you know? The, and and it, that, compared to the GameCube version, it's emissive. Meaning, uh, again, developer talk. Like, when you, when you, when you, um... Like, let's say I'm making a, a light, like a lamppost in the street. The actual um, how can I, the actual material that I would put inside the actual lamp to make it light and glow is called emissives. They do this with, the, with, with that tail and with so many other particle effects and all that in this game where they're actually, they actually glow. It actually looks like vivid light, you know, different colors and stuff like that. So that is just like phenomenal, bro. The, the particle effects, the lighting system now. Um, even though it's this, uh, a very similar lighting system to the original game, the technology allows them to add actual extra light sources to really spruce it up. Uh, the movement, uh, as many people have said in the reviews, there's not that much bobbing up and down of the hand cannon while she's, you know, while she's walking, you know, and turning and stuff like that. There's not that much of that, uh, which is kind of good because it steadies it. You know, I, I know some people, uh, I was hearing, um, OJ from Player Essence uh, talk about it. And he's you know, a Metroid fan as well. And uh, he has a, he has problems with uh, first person shooters. He gets motion sickness uh, when he plays certain ones or all of them. I'm not really sure, but he, he did talk about that. That kind of helped him with this game that there's not so much, you know, bobbing up and down as you're walking. Some people might miss that, you know, because it is kind of more realistic. You know, you're like, damn, 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 in a heavy suit. But, you know, it's still there's still some movement. So it looks like you're walking. It doesn't just look like you're gliding. It doesn't look like Wolfenstein 3D, you know what I'm saying? We're just like, you know, but um. Yeah, there's that uh, a couple of things that I did notice and that I, and other reviewers picked up. You know, there's certain things that, that are missing. Like, you know, when you fire your beam cannon, you know, just fire your, your hand cannon in, a, in a, like a dark corridor. It no longer gives off dynamic uh, environmental light. Like it doesn't light up the environment, you know, like doom, like the flash. That doesn't happen. So that's kind of a misstep. Don't know if they just didn't if they overlooked that or, if, you know, they just didn't have enough. And they had they, had, they wanted to put their resources elsewhere for other grander things. It's understandable. But that's something I noticed. Uh, also, in certain places where there's a reflective surface, like the like the Chozo ruins, where you see like you know the, those those spherical um, reflective uh, domes on the wall, and the GameCube version, which was awesome that they pulled this off in the GameCube, you could actually see Samus reflected on it when you walk up to it. Here, that's not there. Uh, but aside from that, bro, and given everything else they added to it, bro, this is this experience is so is definitively better than the Cube. It is the definitive way to experience Metroid Prime Four. Uh, I'm probably about, man, I just got, I, I've only been able to play it like in depth, in depth, play it like three or four times over the last couple of days. Again, cause my kids were here. Um, I got to the point in the, in, you know, once you land on Talon 4 where I got the, you know, you know, spoiler alert for those who haven't played it as in every Metroid game, you know, basically every Metroid game, you lose all your abilities and you have to go throughout the game reclaiming them. So I already got back my, uh, charge shot. 
and the morph ball. So now I'm trying to find like, you know, the rest of them because there's so many areas that I've gotten to that I cannot progress because it's obvious I need another one of Samus' abilities. But, um, man, I mean, it's just so, it's so fucking epic, man. And, bro, the soundtrack, everything has been redone so beautifully. Uh, there's no more, like, you know, when you, when you, in the original Metroid Prime and even in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption on the Wii, when you go up to a blast door and you shoot it so it could open up and you can go to the next level, it'll delay like three or four seconds because it's loading the, the next area of the game. This is seamless on the Switch. It just, boom, sh- opens up, you go through. Again, more powerful hardware. But, um... No, it's just a great, great game, man. I cannot recommend it to more than I already am right now to everybody who is a Switch owner, uh, especially if you're a Nintendo diehard, if you like the Nintendo franchises. Uh, it's just fucking phenomenal, man. And it kind of, like, reinvigorated me on the Switch in a sense. You know, I'm still, bro, Series X is still my go-to. But, like, there's too much shit happening on Series X right now as far as Game Pass and all that that I'm still, like, I'd rather game there. But the, the Switch has that versatility, bro, that when I have that little motherfucker with me, wherever I go, man, it's, bro, it's Metroid Prime 4. I'm um, Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Prime Remastered, dog. And if it's not that, it's Cowabunga Collection. If it's not that, it's Mario 3D All-Stars Collection. If it's not that, it's, bro, N64 Online, uh, Game, Game Boy Advance Online. All, bro, it's just phenomenal what's going on now. It kind of reinvigorated me in the sense of, like, all the big games that are coming out. Like, I can't wait for Pikmin 4. I've always, I always couldn't wait for Pikmin 4. But I kind of just died down on Nintendo in the sense of, like, Okay, when it comes, it comes. Now I'm hyped for it. And I, it actually has me like thinking, man, I need to go back and get Splatoon 3 because I just cannot let that go. Um, also, I'm fucking hyped to the dick for Tears of the Kingdom. I know I said graphically it didn't really blow me away, and it didn't, but it's not like it looked worse than Breath of the Wild. It did not. It looked a slight, it looked a tad bit bumped up. Very similar, though. But Breath of the Wild was still an amazing looking game to me. The art style of that game is phenomenal. So. And the gameplay they show is just fucking ridiculous. I cannot wait for Breath of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, but yeah, bro. So yeah, Metro Prime uh, Remastered. Epic, bro. Now, what does that mean for Nintendo going forward as far as, you know, all the rumors we've had over the last couple of years, people seem to forget that the rumors weren't just about, oh, I'm sorry, the rumors weren't initially about a Metroid Prime Remastered. The rumors were about a Metroid, uh, a Metroid Prime Trilogy remastered for the Switch. And now, that, later on, that evolved into, yeah, the Trilogy rumor was still there, and that leak was still there and alive and well. And then all of a sudden, we started hearing about a Metroid Prime remaster, just the original, aside from the Trilogy. Now, we obviously knew that that, we obviously know now that that was a reality, because here it is. But I'm like... I think that means to me, and I don't want to get my hopes up because it's, it, Nintendo will nin, Nintendo will do Nintendo things. They will Nintendo this shit up in, 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 in the worst way a lot of the time. But what that means to me is that Prime 2 Echoes and Prime 3 Corruption, Jesus Christ, please, Prime 3 Corruption, are there remastered. They're done. They've been done along with this original. The trilogy was rumored to have been done a while ago, and they were just sitting on it. And I, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come out, all of this, the trilogy, everything, was, and Prime 4 included, were supposed to come out sometime, I want to say the trilogy was probably supposed to come out anywhere from late 21 to sometime in 2022. And then Prime 4 shortly after. And with everything that happened with the pandemic and supply chains and all that, all that got pushed back. Uh, so now, I, I think their whole plan was to release the trilogy, remaster, boom, together as one game like, like Metroid Prime Trilogy like it is on the Wii or the Wii U and then give that you know maybe half a year to breathe get people hyped on those games get people back into the Prime you know franchise and then at the end of the year or you know mid the following year drop Prime 4 now that got fucked up with COVID and so now I think what they did was all right now that they're able to they said all right let's this is the perfect time let's drop Prime Remastered what that means to me, and I know I sound very pessimistic on the, on the Nintendo Direct as far as Metro Prime 4 goes. It doesn't exist, this and that, whatever. You guys, like, understand my humor. You know what I'm saying? I, I have very dry, sarcastic humor. And I ain't gonna bullshit you. 50% of me, a hard 50% at least, believes that game got canceled. But there's always that other half of me that doesn't think Nintendo would ever be able to live that down. So I don't think, that part of me doesn't think it was canceled. So I'm appealing to that side right now as I speak to you. I'm basically th- I'm, I'm basically thinking what they decided to do was say, okay, boom, February, drop Metroid Prime Remastered, shock the shit out of everybody. 
Holy fuck. And it's number one on Amazon for the physical co- for the physical uh, version that comes out on the 22nd. And it's the number one downloaded game on the eShop. Boom. Now I think they're going to let this breed. Because I, I think the reason they decided to drop it now is because Prime 4 is a lot closer to completion than any of us anticipate. Like, basically done. Go with me on this. I know this is a fucking... I know this is a, a journey down the rabbit hole like never before. But I just got this feeling, dog. Because why? Why release Prime Remastered now if Prime 4 is anything over a year away? And even a year is a lot. The only reason you would release Prime Remastered now and blow the shit out of everybody with this fucking monumental game, this monumental, epically done fucking remaster, Retro Bro, I doubted you guys, hadn't heard from you guys in fucking seven years, uh, no, uh, nine years, really, because Nani's on Tro- Tropical Freeze, Wii U, was the last real game you guys released, but y- y- y'all came through, y'all showed life, and, and everything should be hunky-dory going forward. Now, you release it, now, in February of 2023, Let's say Prime is going to come out the end of this year or mid next year. The only reason you would release Prime Remastered, the original. Now, if it's that, if Prime 4 is that far away, is because you have a plan to release the other two, Prime 2, uh, Prime 2 Echoes and Prime 3 Corruption, trickled out throughout the rest of this year leading into 4. So I could see them saying, hey, boom, you know, Spring going into summer, Prime 2 Echoes. Fall going into winter, Prime 3 Corruption. And then summer of 2024. Hopefully not all the way in holiday, but hell, I can see them doing it in the holiday because it would be a huge game. It would be their holiday game. Prime 4. So I am back. Instead of 50-50 now, it's like 75-25. 75% of me believes that Prime 4 is a real thing. And it's really close to being done. While 25% of me is still pessimistic and it's still like, uh, they, they don't fucked around too much. I don't believe them. But but Prime Remastered is a thing. So, and I'm like, and like I said, we've been hearing about the trilogy being done for a long time. So I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers. They're going to drop two and then three and then lead into four. Like this perfect fucking storm, which would be awesome. Now, here's the question. Couple questions. First, let's say that Prime 4 is, like I said, a lot closer to being done than we anticipate. Let's say it's coming, bro. Let's say it's coming this holiday. Then do they release 2 and 3 as separate games? Or do they release them in a double pack? Like the much rumored Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD double pack that's supposed to come out for the Switch. And the other question, do they... Do Prime 2 Echoes and Prime 3 Corruption have the same treatment that Prime Remastered got? I'm talking about they went in there balls deep, man. Balls deep, bro. And fucking went in there and did the same amount of, of work and effort to restore 2 and 3 so much that we'll look at them like we look at Prime Remastered and be like, yo, these games are basically remakes. Because if they did that, I said, bro. And there's a chance that they did. Hear me good. There's a chance that they did because, again, the rumors have been for the last two and a half years, they were remastering Trilogy, the ent- all three games, and that they were done. They were just sitting on them. And look at the way Prime 1 came out. If that's not the case and Prime 2 and Prime 3 get released, but they just get upscaled kind of like they did with Twilight Princess HD on the Wii U, I will be disappointed just because of look how much, look how epic Prime Remastered Get what I'm saying? But they could very well do it that way. And it would still be dope, man. It would still be dope to have those games on the Switch. I'd still go in. Easy. But, bro, if they're, rem- if they're remastered to the point that this one is, it, it's perfect. It is perfect leading into Metroid Prime 4. The only thing that is, and and, and I, I, sh- I swear to God, it cannot. Prime 4 cannot disappoint. It's not possible. I, I'm, I'm going to go on them right now and say it's not, it's not going to happen. Prime 4 is going to be fucking amazing. Because there is no way that you bring this fucking gem to the Switch, remastered to the dick, and then release 2 and 3 with the same treatment, and they're all epic, and then Prime 4 is a left them. There's no way. There's no way. And with the amount of time they've been working on this motherfucker, there's no way. With the amount of talent they've been hiring, 
I, I, if I'm not mistaken, they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, people in there. I'm not sure if they're artists or renderers or, or, you know, animators or whatnot. But you have people from, like, Insomniac. Was it Insomniac? I believe it was Insomniac. Uh, I, I got to go back and look. But all these major developers that we know have worked on big-time shit on other consoles, they brought them in for help. So, and this has been going for years. So, I think that's the plan, bro. I think that is the roadmap for Nintendo as far as uh, the Metroid strategy, I'm going to call it. Their prime strategy is that. I believe it more than I don't. I'll tell you right now. I don't know what you guys think. You guys can leave uh, your thoughts in the comments and let me know what you think. Now, on to other stuff. God damn, Prime Remaster is so fucking epic. Uh, on to other stuff. Um, an announcement that I that I saw. I saw it on my Facebook. Uh, you know, I follow, like I said, a lot of uh, different video game communities, video game clubs and all that. And one of them posted this article uh, that's... Uh, Ed Boon has been on record saying that he wants to remaster Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Bro, listen, bro. Hey, look, look, look. All right. If if that happens, my wife is going to divorce me. I'm telling you right now that happens because I will be on that shit 24 seven. And, and I, I have no doubt because Mortal Kombat, bro, Mortal Kombat sells, dude. Mortal Kombat sells. Mortal Kombat 11. Fuck it. Bro, ever, especially... Mortal Kombat always sells, but especially since the Nether Realm era started. Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat X, Mortal Kombat 11. All three of those games have sold mirac- like fucking miraculous numbers and have a fucking huge fan base. And the Mortal Kombat fan base, I'm not the only one, has been clamoring for another Shaolin Monks. For, bro, since the game came out. And since they scrapped that sequel that was supposed to be Fire and Ice, which was supposed to be Scorpion and Sub Zero, I, I'm st- I'm still I'm still salty about that. But because Mortal Kombat sells, if they do this, if they remaster Shaolin Monks, bro, with today's graphics, today's controls, to, bro, oh my god, bro, oh my god, if, like remaster it for real, not even okay, because a lot of times we as gamers we get tripped up in the language. And it's not even our fault; it's the developer's fault because a developer will make will remake a game like from the ground up and call it a remaster. And it's like, no, 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 that's a remake. And then other games will be called a remake, and you can tell all they did was upscale it. So, for me, the vernacular is a remaster means you went in there and you prettied it up. It's the same game through and through, but you just touched it up, made it prettier, upscaled it. Most of the time, it's just an upscale. A remake. Is you went in there and you literally recreated the game pretty much piece by piece. And if not completely piece by piece, the majority of the assets, the models, and things like that have been remade. That's a remake to me because then it's because it be, the controls are redone and, and for modern, not just optimized, redone. That's a remake. If he remakes, if Netherrealm remakes Mortal Kombat Shadow Monks, like, look, I'll be cool with a remaster as long as it's a badass remaster like this one, like, uh, like Prime. But if he remakes Shaolin Monks with today's fucking technology, oh my god! And look, he doesn't even have to remake it. Let's say it's a freaking nasty remaster, like this Prime remaster. If it's that, it's going to sell bonkers, and it's going to bring in a whole new era of Mortal Kombat fans that were too young when, sh- or, or not born even, when Shaolin Monks came out, but have been crazy in Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat Eleven. And it will show them a whole new gameplay dynamic Mortal Kombat is capable of. And you know what that'll do? It'll sell, sell, sell. And you know what that'll do? It'll make Ed Boon, who, who he has admitted countless times, Netherrealm has been on record. Damn, we wish we could make other kinds of games. But everybody knows us for fighting and everybody loves our fighting games. Mortal Kombat, Injustice. That's what everybody wants from us. If this is done and it sells gonna get that fire and ice we're gonna get that scorpion and some zero shallow monks and i will fucking take off to the moon i may never come back bro i will go crazy man so that was a really cool announcement that was a re- real cool to see that it's not just all the it's, it wasn't just the typical oh ed you know on his twitter what about more coming shallow monks this and that 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 yeah, yeah, well, you never say never, bro. We'd love to. Da, da, da. No, he was actively saying, I really want to remake this game or remaster this game or whatever the quote was. Do it! Do it! 
Bro, I'm telling you. So, yeah, man, like, it's, oh, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy, it's crazy, crazy. But, yeah, man, uh, so, yeah, like, that's basically the video for now, man. Just keep in mind, I am uh, today, as a matter of fact. I'm, I'm uh, Today's Friday, so I'm, I'm going in, in, in the lab, so to speak. And I'm going to begin to capture all the footage for that Mortal Kombat Armageddon review. I promise I'd give you guys. So I'm going to begin capturing a lot of that footage tonight. Maybe capture some more tomorrow. It's going to be kind of tough this weekend because I got, uh, what do I have? I have my mother-in-law's birthday tomorrow. So that's a dinner. So that's later in the evening. And then I have the next day, during the day, I have my uh, my nephew uh, uh, just got a, a job with the FBI, man. So he's going to the training and all that. So for you know to send them off, we're going to have a little party at my grandma's house. So, but it's still going to get done. Uh, like that's why I said, I'm going to capture a lot of the footage tonight. And then it's really just going to be a matter of uh, doing my voiceover or maybe even putting me in the frame along with the game, whatever. We'll see how, how I splice it up and, uh, you know, editing it and put it together. So look forward to that sometime. Probably I want to say between to give myself, because I'm also working on animation stuff because I'm really trying to hit that shit hard now because I'm trying to get the fuck out of here this year. So a lot of stuff going on, but uh, I'd say be, to be realistic, I'm going to give myself between Monday to Wednesday of this coming week. That video will be up. Might be up sooner. You know how I am. I'll say between now and then, and then I fucking hit you with a video out of nowhere. So uh, it's, it, it all depends on how the timing goes down and all that. But, but for sure, between Monday and Wednesday, no later than that. So that'll be there. Capturing the footage for that tonight. Uh, bro, as far as anything else gaming related, bro... Um, The E3 situation, man, it just hurts my heart, man. Like, I just saw today uh, Ubisoft's comments on it. Remember I said, I'm like, yo, you know that EA is going to be there. And, you know, the third-party companies are still probably going to be there or make a showing. But without the big three, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, it's kind of like, uh, bro, e bro, put it this way. It's such a sad state of affairs. Ubisoft's, uh, I, I want to say CEO, uh, Eves, I forget his last name. Uh, he's, he's, he's basically, he's been at all their, like, press conferences since, like, the Wii days. Uh, and I believe he's Ubisoft Montreal. Um, I don't know if it's Montreal. Whatever, it's Ubisoft. Uh, he comes out and he says, uh, yeah, if E3 happens, we'll be there. Like, he has to even say, like, oh, if it happens, yeah, we'll be there. Like, if, nigga. Like, what? Like, E3, man. Like, it's, it's gone, man. It's, 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 a, it's becoming a bygone era, man, it's, which sucks, bro. But, yeah, that was the, that's what he said. And then I, I think somebody from the E3, like, committee and all that, clarified like yeah we, it, it is happening so i guess they're gonna be there um i was watching spawn wave and um he was talking about uh you know what, what are they gonna have to show probably gonna, it's probably gonna be assassin's creed you know up the wazoo uh most likely but i'm, I'm fingers crossed i don't give a, i don't care if everybody else is tired of this franchise i don't give a shit it's my favorite ubisoft franchise far cry 7 come on come on give it to me we'll see uh but uh yeah man and then you know like, that, it's, it's just a sad state of affairs when it comes to E3. I mean, it's, you can look at it, you know, like, the, it's kind of like the glass half full, half empty paradox. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's half empty because it sucks, bro. We're losing something that we love, that we grew up with. But it's also advancing, uh, you know, I don't want to say technology. It's advancing the industry because now these companies get with us on the regular, man. There's like a weekly Xbox show, dude. There's Nintendo Directs, three or three or four big Directs every every year and a bunch of little mini ones here and there. And Sony State of Play happens, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not, I'm not familiar with their schedule, but it happens regularly. So, you know, it, it this is a good thing in that sense. So it's like the half full, half empty type of shit, you know. Um, what else, man? I think we're coming up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this weekend's the NBA All-Star Game. Um, I haven't even kept track, bro. No, no don't get me wrong. It's, the NBA is still my thing, man, obviously. But, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't been in control. I mean, the, 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 the only thing I'm waiting to see is I'm like, yo. First of all, my favorite player is is not going to play because he can't play even in his team right now until after the All-Star break because he's nursing an injury. Kevin Durant, baddest motherfucker on the planet. Uh, but he just got traded to the Suns, and now the Suns got Chris Paul, Kevin Durant, and Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. Yeesh! <laughs> like, ugh. like I feel bad for LeBron, bro, because he just broke the scorer record. He's probably in LA like, this motherfucker, I can't get rid of KD, dude. He's always there to ruin my shit. So it's like... It's just funny, man. But yeah, bro. I, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll probably tune in here and there, see the three point contest, see the dunk contest, even though that shit's going extinct, and then, and then see if I can watch the game, man. Because I love the NBA, man. So it'd be cool to see LeBron. You know, I think Kyrie's gonna be there. Luca for sure is gonna be there. Giannis. It'd be, it'd be cool to see all these dudes, man. Um, uh, what else, man? And, and oh yeah, and then fucking uh, we just got the 
the trailer, bro. I know this is all over the place, not just video games anymore, but just what, what the fuck? I want to you know, hang out with my peeps. We got fucking the trailer for The Flash. Woo! Dude! Dude! Bro, Ben Affleck's Batman, which is my favorite Batman of all time. It, it really is. And, and don't I, don't look at me like I'm some young punk. Oh, it's just because it's the new one. Nah, bro. I, I've, I've been watching since the 80s, bro. I love Michael Keaton. I, and, and I liked Christian Bale a lot, dude. The new one, uh, the Batman, Robert Patterson, I liked him as Batman. I hated him as Bruce Wayne. That is not Bruce Wayne. But the movie was really good. But either way, uh, Ben Affleck's my favorite Batman because I feel like he's the actor that when he got casted as Batman, I hated it. I was like, oh my God, this is going to suck. And then he blew me away because he fucking, he nailed Bruce Wayne and Batman. Both of them perfectly. Like Christian Bale really nailed Bruce Wayne and he did good with Batman. But I think Ben Affleck fucking hit both out of the park. So... To have him in there and then have the OG Michael Keaton that you're just like, bro, this guy's like 76. What's he going to do? And with the CG and all that, he just flies down and fucking Arkham Knight take down one of the fucking villains or one of the bad guys. Uh, it looks amazing. And they're, they're doing basically Flashpoint, but they're remixing little things here and there. And this is supposed to be what starts off the new DC universe. Go for it, man. If you guys couldn't make it work with the Snyderverse, which was going to... Snyderverse was fucking amazing, bro, but they didn't want to do it. There was internal problems here and there and then... Unfortunately, you know, we all know, you know, Snyder's daughter, you know, lost her life or t took her own life. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but that weighed on everything and fucked everything up. And, and, you know, they wanted to go in a different direction. So, all right, cool. This James Gunn guy, I don't know who he is. I never heard of him. I don't keep up with directors and all that, but he has a plan and he laid it out. And I'm like, all right, that looks like a good plan. And then when he's like, he's like this movie every day. Oh, why is the flash? Why is Ezra Miller still there with all the shit he did? Listen, bro, I don't support any of the shit he did, but I, I'm, I'm somebody that when it comes to entertainment or sports, I don't give a fuck about their personal life, man. Unless you're one of my heroes, I don't really look into your personal life. I don't give a fuck. If they gave you the role and you do a good job in the movie, I'm, I'm watching the movie for entertainment. I'm not there to support what you do or don't do. So, but this movie kicks off the entire new universe. And he was quoted saying, he was like, yo, I don't care, you know, all the backlash. This movie has to come out because I have seen it. And it's, it's fucking crazy. It has to come out. So, hey, let's go. The trailer looked bananas. Um, so, there's that. And we got Scream 6, bro. Scream 6 in less than a month, bro. Bro, I am hyped. Hyped. Like I said before, bro, you know me. I love horror, man. I'm, I'm about the slashes, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Keep that shit alive, bro. That, that's the goodness, man. That's that campfire story. Fucking, you know, when you were a kid and shit, had a sleepover and all that. Bro, to this day, I, I just had 20 fucking kids spend the night here. When my kids came down, when my when my boys came down, um, their, their stepsister, my, my stepdaughter, Wanted to have a, a, a birthday sleepover because her birthday just passed a little while ago. She postponed it to have it when the boys are here so that all her dancer friends, 20 of them, were in here. So we got 20 fucking little girls here, my two boys, me and my wife, some of the parents. All those kids know me for for loving horror, bro. Last time she had a sleepover about a year or two ago, I was like, y'all want to see a scary movie? And I put on Nightmare on Elsie, the original, and they were all like, oh my God, but they were riveted. They loved it. So... Bro, they wanted to watch Scream 5 or whatever it was. and You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, bro, like, Scream, Scream. I, I can't wait. Uh, that's basically it, man. I rambled on a lot, man. I just wanted to get with you guys, uh, talk games, a little bit of movies, sports, all that. Uh, but yeah, bro, if I haven't said it enough, man, Metroid Prime Remastered. Don't don't, don't punish yourself, man. Don't be a masochist. Go, go get this game. And it's not even for, bro, all the work they did on this game. I expected Nintendo to rape our wallet, bro. Like, fucking no lube, nothing, no consent, just... 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Go get the game, bro. I'm telling you, it's epic. Um, I, I want to do an in-depth review on it. I just don't know how long that's going to take me to do because I'm struggling right now. I'm stuck in the game. I'm loving being stuck, but I'm, like, stuck, stuck. So I'm, like, fucking... It's going to take me a while to get through it. But once I get through it, man, I'll do my in-depth review, show some footage and all that. But, yeah, like I said, the next one is Mortal Kombat Armageddon. That's for sure. Coming in the next couple days. Wednesday the latest, like I said. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, man. God bless y'all. Stay gaming always. Peace. It's R to the double E. Dash to the Z-O-N. God bless you. You know this. Peace.